And Pete Carroll knows what's at stake. As for the uh, Michigan Wolverines, they're just looking for an upset to make news. First quarter, second and one for the Wolverines. The senior QB, John Navarre. He needs to create. He needs to make some plays up top for Braylon Edwards. He had 10 catches to oh. Edwards, but that wasn't one of them. No, it was not. That kind of set the tone for Michigan. Later in the drive, Will Poole, corner blitz, and he drills Navarre. Said Coach Lloyd Cora later, protecting the quarterback was my biggest fear. Garrett Rivas, 47 yards away, and it's blocked by Sean Cody. Pete Carroll ecstatic because his team made Michigan's ninth-ranked scoring offense look meek in this one. Late in the first, USC driving Matt Leinart. Leinart to carry Colbert for the score. The senior Colbert, a school record 207 catches in his collegiate career, John. We go to the second quarter, same score. Michigan driving third and three, and Poole, well, keep an eye on him. He's arrowed from the corner. Off he comes, and there goes Navarre getting maimed again. He had minus 58 rushing yards in this game, and, well, several bruises. Later in the second, Navarre pass to Edwards again, and this time it hits his heel. How kooky is that? Lofa Tatupu then takes it the other way with the pick. Let's look at it again because these things don't happen very often. Poor Edwards. All he was doing was running by. Next thing you know, he kicks it to the wrong guy. <laughs> there we go. That's going to set up a touchdown by Lendale White. Car can't believe team down 14 nothing. Yeah, and that was a score in the third when this happens. Matt Leinert going deep to Colbert, and Colbert, that's a ridiculous catch. You need another look. You know what? Colbert is often overshadowed by his all-American teammate, Mike Williams, but not on that play. 21 nothing late in the third. Trojans are driving again, and a little trickery, Mike Tirico. Second and goal for the 15. A reverse coming. Toss to the back to Williams. Throws back to the quarterback. Leiner. He's at the five. Touchdown, USC. What a play. Oh, they're drawing him up in the dirt now. You run to the fire hydrant and take a lift. Wow. It was exactly like we did it in practice. I mean, it, it was a great flip to Mike. It's a great throw by Mike. It's a great catch by Matt. You're talking about great players make, making something happen. That was, you know, probably the play of the game, I would guess. So Liner catches the TD, and he throws for three more in this one. Well, Michigan didn't travel all the way out here just to get whooped, so they're going to try and come back in the fourth quarter. 28-7, Navarre proving that not everything that happened to Edwards today was bad. Ten catches, 106 yards. That was good. First down. That's it's up Chris Perry. 23 carries, 85 yards. His 18th rushing touchdown of the season. Michigan trailing 28-14. Late fourth quarter, fourth and 22. Michigan, they got to go. And, well, Navarre got to go down. He must go down hard. Dallas starts, destroys the poor man. Michigan allowing nine sacks against USC. This after allowing 15 all season long in the previous 12 games. USC wins at 28-14. Now 4-0 in bowl games when they're ranked number one. Trojan get the Rose Bowl trophy and liner, a ladder, sharp tool, and cuts down the nets. Air champions. The Rose Bowl presented by City and the MVP trophy presented to Matt Liner. 12th straight game with at least two TD passes. Michigan held to a season low 14 points by the Southern Cal defense and falls to 3-15-1 all time against number one teams. And SC still number one in both bowls for a couple more days. Our game day crew is in Pasadena. So proud to be able to get to this point. Playing the Rose Bowl, representing fantastic University of Southern California and all the people that love the Trojan football. And to the people sitting up there and all the way around that you're still here, I think we just won the national championship. We're number one in my book right now, and I, I'd like to challenge any team that would like to play us. I mean, I, I don't see anybody beating us right now. We're at the top of our ball at the end of the year, and that's where you got to be. We're just happy with what we've done here, what we've accomplished all season. I mean, everybody wants to make a big deal out of it and go ahead. They got the trophy, we're, we're called national champions. One thing Coach Carroll always preached is one heartbeat. And we came out here and we did it. You know, they can't, nobody can take this away from us. The game is over and we're number one. I hope they, you know, move into the BCS to the playoff system because this doesn't make any sense. You know, after the long season, nobody wants to share a title, but, you know, right now we'll take what we can get. I think we proved that, um, you know, we came out the season number one and we finished number one and, and we beat a great team in Michigan. And uh, we know we're, you know, we feel we're national champs. We're the number one team in the human polls. And we, we won our bowl game, so we're the number one team in the country. Uh, that's all I need to know. It says champions on it. Uh, BCS, Oklahoma, LSU, whoever, that has nothing to do with us. We're going to enjoy this win. We won against a big-time program like Michigan, and, you know, there's nothing else to say. They consider themselves the people's champion. The champion in the Nokia Sugar Bowl might have a little bit of an asterisk. The difference is two touchdowns, but...
the difference a lot more than that. You can look at the sacks, nine against a team that allowed 15 all season. More on that later. The field position was very key because of SC's punting and kickoffs. The yards per play, a huge difference. And he beat FSU by eight. Larry Coker this week spoke about playing FSU again. He said, I really don't want to play Florida State again as a rematch and then open the season with them. I don't think that's particularly good for college football, but that's what's happening and we've got to move forward. They're playing each other Labor Day. That's what he's talking about. And here's a fact. This is the 48th meeting between two schools, and it's the first ever in a bowl game. Second quarter, we got the arrows going on Miami corner. Willie Cooper showing blitz and tailback of FSU. Lorenzo Booker makes the block. Rick's avoiding the blitz, throws deep, and it's caught by Chauncey Stovall. Rick 6-19 for a season low 96 yards. 7-3 FSU it would be. Rick's rolling left, looking to create, finds Matt Henshaw for the touchdown. 14-3 FSU. Same score in the second. Jared Payton from Miami goes to work. Boy, their tailbacks, what a history for Miami, huh? Payton, the latest, the third career 100-yard game. 22 carries, 131 yards in this one. Same drive, second and goal, another weapon for the Hurricanes, Tyrone Moss. Moss doesn't miss from there. Miami down four. And it was a one-point game in the third. FSU up. John Petty from 51 yards away. This was his first career 50-yard attempt, and he makes it. Miami up by two, 16-14. Still in the third, same score. Brock Berlin, 14-29, 157 yards and two picks. He's hit. And as he throws, Kellen Winslow is hit hard as the ball arrives. Take another look. Berlin leveled by Charles Howard. What about Winslow? He was decked by Ernie Sims. Huge. Both players would shake it off and return. And they're not even hockey players. Hey, let's flash back. Memorable kicking moments in this series. 91, FSU down one. Jerry Thomas missing. Wide right. Miami wins. Let's move on to 92, FSU down three. Don, Dan Mowry misses. Wide right. Miami wins. The year 2000, down three, FSU. Matt Munyon misses. You got it. Wide right. Miami wins. 2002, Xavier Bethia. Misses wide left. Miami wins. Okay. Back to this one. Fourth quarter. FSU down two under six minutes left. Faith yeah, for the field goal. 39-yard attempt. You gotta be wide right. Oh. Miami's still up two. Goodness. Next Miami possession. Fourth and inches. Miami punting. DJ Williams. Williams takes the fake punt. Gets inside FSU's 40. That sets up a 45-yard field goal attempt. And it's blocked by B.J. Ward. Unbelievable elevation by B.J. Ward. So, Bethia with another chance. He's hoping. Rick's throwing deep to Stovall. Well, we got a bunch of flags thrown. Bunch. Offensive pass interference. What happened here? Well, Stovall falls, so he takes Kelly Jennings down with him. One last chance for the Seminoles. Fourth and 12. Rick's. To P.K. Sam, but Sam can't hold on. Bobby Bowden can't believe it. Coker is ecstatic. Miami finds a way. Jared Payton and the Hurricanes winning the FedEx Orange Bowl 16 to 14. Purdue, Georgia, because seriously, what would Capital One Bowl Week be, you know, without the Capital One Bowl? Well, here it is. Georgia taking on Purdue for the second time. Only two times they've met would have been bowl games. David Green, Fred Gibson, second time they hook up. Four yards, six yards, and it's 14 nothing, just like that. Later in the first, same score. Kyle Orton will play fake, except David Pollock, not so fake. You got you to gotta stay at home, field your position, then crunch the guy. Orton leaves the game with a dislocated thumb, but would return later. It's on his non-throwing hand. There he goes, but clearly the man's not enjoying his day. Second quarter, Georgia up 17 nothing. Green... Reggie Brown. Green, 27 to 37, 324 yards. The route is on. It is 24 nothing. Or is it? Let us flash back to the year 2000. The Outback Bowl, the other time the dogs and the boilers met. Well, Purdue was up 25 nothing, but UJ fought back. Less than a minute to go. Georgia ties it with a touchdown there. We go to overtime and in the extra session. The field goal is good, not wide right or wide left. It's just good. Largest comeback in Georgia history. All right, Purdue going to return the favor. We shall see. In the second quarter, there's Orton again. Now he's running. 17 yards in the hizzy. He had two TDs in the game on the ground. 24-7. They're getting started. Fourth quarter is 24-10. Orton, Taylor Stubblefield got it. 
That'll cover 40 yards. Orton, 230 yards passing. They'd score a TD, brings them within seven. After a field goal, 27-17. John Stanford, he's running large. Running free for 60 yards. Seven catches, 77 now for the season. Next play, Orton. Looking for his man, Anthony Chambers. I'm reasonably sure he's his man because he's on the other end of a touchdown pass. Purdue within three. Purdue failed on the onside kick, so it's George's ball. And you got to run out the clock, but you got to be careful with the bean. Craig Lumpkin fumbles. Craig Terrell got it. Doesn't get They say he's down there. Eventually, this thing's corralled, but they're going to give the ball to Purdue. Mark, what exactly, what's the thinking there, Coach, please? If we took a knee every yeah. time, we would have had to punt. So we were trying to run plays that would take two or three or four seconds to make sure we didn't have to punt. And in hindsight, it, it, it hurt us. I mean, the reasoning is sound until you screw it all up. Then Ben Jones, field goal, 44 yards. Hello, overtime. You know, T, you got to go right back. Got to get the man back on the horse. Or in this case, I guess it's hair of the dog. Lumpkin dives in for the touchdown on fourth and goal. Georgia up 34-27 after the PAT. Purdue's chance on fourth and goal. And overtime, Orton incomplete. But there's a flag. Let's give him another down. And this time, Purdue, definitely no good. No flag. Just interception by Tony Taylor. Georgia wins at 34-27. So it's the same outcome, but in reverse. Dogs cough up a 24-point lead. Still Ron Zook and the Gators dropped last year's Outback Bowl against Michigan. There's the man hoping his offense, like those fighter jets, a quick strike crew, and we see it in the first quarter. Gators ball in their own 30, and look at Chris Leak fling the magic bean to Kelvin Kite. Not going to get him. 70-yard pitch and catch. PAT good. 7-0 Florida. Iowa, well, kind of by planes. You know, Iowa good, sensible, get you done there. All being effective. Nathan Chandler, Maurice Brown. See, that's a touchdown. Doesn't have to be fancy. We're tied at seven. Hawkeyes. All right, sure, they can make touchdowns a plenty, just like the parachuters. Third quarter, it's 20 to seven. Matt Malloy blocks Eric Wilbur. And, oh, push him out of the way and get on that ball. That's a Hawkeye touchdown. 27-7. It's great to be a Hawkeye. Take a closer look. Malloy, there he is. Doesn't appear anybody wants to block him, so here he comes. What happened to the personal protector? That guy should have his scholarship yanked. The top 10 nominee. It's also seven points for Iowa. At this point, Iowa just sailing along. They've been in the air, different mode of transportation. Fred Russell houses it 34 yards. I like to say hizzy. Russell, 150 yards TD. Game MVP. Ron Zook, that's a whooping. I apologize to the Gator fans. Uh, it's my responsibility to get this football team ready to play, and uh, we weren't ready to play today. 37-17, Iowa wins its first January bowl game since 1959. Reese, Trev, and Mark with some, well, some thoughts on what happened here. West Virginia and Maryland pride of Jessica Lynch at the game, a West Virginia native. Rockville, Maryland native Scott McBrien. To the air, 31-yard TD pass to Jafar Williams. McBrien threw for Kerr Hike, 381 yards, three TD passes, and he ran for another. Maryland's junior wide receiver is Steve Suter. I mentioned his name because he came up large. Steve Suter, weird ritual before every game. He throws up. Lewis Johnson, courtesy nice. of the NBC crew, gave uh, Suter a barf bag. Anyway, uh, back to Suter. Junior playing with a bum knee that needs surgery. You never know it. He runs this punt back 76 yards for the score. His sixth career punt return for a touchdown, second of the season. It's 17-0 Terps. It's 24-0 Maryland. Third and eight, McBrien. Throwing deep, Suter. Stays with it, an unreal deflection grab for the 42-yard completion. Take another look at this top 10 nominee. He tips the ball to himself and makes the grab. Four catches, 84 yards. Maryland wins large. West Virginia 1-10 in their last 11 bowl appearances. In two wins against the Mountaineers this year, the Terps have totaled over 1,000 yards to West Virginia's 397 and outscored them 75 to 14. Maryland with 54 first downs in the two games, while West Virginia mustered just 20.